So this is a 16 year old female, uh, unremarkable story diagnosed with an ASD who came in for closure. This is her uh, TEE and in various views it measured between 22 and 24 millimeters with moderate right, RV uh, dilation. I use both TEE and ICE imaging. I will say that I use mostly TEE and I would say mostly because my shop is really just set up to do it. It's pretty slick and um, our echo, there's a our, our echo people are pretty great and um, you know, we have a great, great working sort of uh, rapport uh, during these cases. So I do prefer TEE, although we do use ICE as well. TE can give you these great real-time 3D images as well, which are not necessarily uh, necessary, but are kind of helpful sort of pre and post to sort of form the picture in your mind as to what this ASD actually looks like in terms of where it is relative to all the rims that Shabana described earlier. So that's what the ASD looks like uh, from the RA and LA sides by uh, 3D echo. Um, I don't have the balloon sizing images available for this patient, but I'll tell you that it, it's sized to between 27 and uh, 28 uh, millimeters. And the total atrial septal length, I can't remember what it was, but let's just say it was 40, five millimeters for argument's sake, okay? So in this circumstance, maybe call it 48 millimeters for septal length, you really only have two choices. And that's gonna be your 44 or your 48 millimeter device, right, Shivana? Yeah, Matt, now that the uh, aortic rim was a little on the deficient side, uh, does that sway you one way or the other in terms of what device you would choose? Yeah, so the more deficient the rim is, the more I, I tend to try to use the bigger device if I can. I, I think in this particular patient, the total septal length, uh, which I really try to have an understanding of by transthoracic echo before I come into the lab, was a little bit short. So I thought a 48 might be a bit oversized. And so for this patient, I said, let me try with the 44 millimeter device. And as you said earlier, you know, when we looked at this and, and when others have looked at this and uh, written about this, roughly 60 to 65% of the, of the true secundum ASDs that we treat and that we see have deficient retroaortic rim. I mean, that it's sort of, that is the disease. So, um, so and that really can, can be challenging uh, in, in some anatomies for sure. So, just like Shabana showed, here's the LA disc deployment in sort of a, a LAO cranial on the left-hand panel and in a straight ladder on the right. Open up that LA disc. As you form the LA disc, you get tactile feedback on the handle that tells you that you've reached maximum LA disc deployment. You can sort of feel it in the handle and then you can see it on the flora. You can see it's this wide LA disc, which is flat at the distal end and it sort of tapers down to what, what is going to be sort of the beginning of the RA disc with the waist kind of bunched up as the, as the, the sort of the V of the tulip as you come down. So you want to open your LA disc and you want to pull it up against the atrial septum and there is tactile feedback that you can feel. Um, and this is what that looks like by TE as you're doing it. So that's the disc completely, the LA disc completely full and I'm, you can see that I'm really pulling it back against the uh, atrial septum there. Um, I don't have the RA disc deployment uh, uh, recorded for this patient, but I will tell you that this is what I do uh, every case. And if you look at both the AP, the sort of LAO cranial on the left panel and the lateral, you can see uh, uh, that it's not subtle. The LA disc and the RA disc are sort of deflecting away from one another with that sort of push-pull maneuver. And what you can also see here very clearly is that this is not the natural plane for the atrial septum, right? It's your delivery system is sort of making the septum be in an unnatural position. So when I see this by fluoro and I get that, the, and I see when I formed up the waist that there was clear separation between the RA and LA discs, then what I do is I, I lock it. Watch both of these, you're gonna see a pretty dramatic shift in the plane of the atrial septum, especially in the lateral view as I come down. See that? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So if, yeah, if you look at the lat yeah. if you look at the lateral view, um, you can see it goes it almost shifts from sort of a 90 degree to sort of a parallel to what the what the actual plane of the septum should be. And this is what that looks like. Now I'm off the locking loop is um, is deployed and the only thing attached to this ASD device is the suture, which is providing no support for the device at all, right? And you can see how flat that looks. Um, it really is a very nice result, right? So at this point, this is when I begin my true interrogation by echo. And we just sort of, I start sort of in the sh short axis view and kind of work my way around by cable. And when you're working with a choreographer, the way that I do this is I sort of say, let me drive for five minutes. And I sort of tell them which views I wanna see. And then I say, okay, now I want you to look and you tell me if you see something because I think this looks good. And then we compare notes and if everybody agrees, we release the device. Um, and then this is what that looks like. Um, interesting um, with what I've noticed on the 44 device, it really, even, I don't know if this is true or not, but it tends to almost pull flatter than, than, the, than, the, uh, than the smaller devices. And I don't know if it's just something unique to my experience, but I've kind of noticed that that device really does sort of lay flat. And um, if you look at both of these views, I you saw how hard I was pushing and pulling it and trying to deflect it. So I was pretty confident that this was uh, straddling the septum, even though I could never find that LAO view that really demonstrated separation between, between the discs that I like to see. And this is what it looks like for, by the rest of the TEE. And then we even have some 3D images here, which are more for show. The Echo people love this. The LA disc is on the, le on the, on the left-hand panel there and the RA disc is on the right-hand side. Um, you see that is a very, very nice, nice result uh, for this patient. This is what it looks like by transthoracic echo the next day. Again, you can see that it, that LA sort of the device sort of right in the septum, it, there still looks like it's kind of bowing from LA to RA in plane with the atrial septum there. 